My name is Allison Charles, and I go to Adkins Academic and Technology High School. This is the STEM high school in the community, so every student has to select a major. I decided to be a part of the biotechnology major. Um, because, of, um, because I went to Adkins, um, I've been given many opportunities, and I've earned many opportunities that have helped prepare me for my future goals of going to medical school. The goal of our research is to transform a bacteria, an E. coli cell, to code for the enzyme amylase. The enzyme amylase digests starches, which is not something that E. coli can typically do. Um, we'd like to create this kit so that future students can use it to learn about gene cloning in the advanced biotechnology class. Um, this, we want to do this because the commercial kits that you can buy now do not have materials to allow for mistakes which are bound to happen in science because not everything works out the first time. The first step of this project was to extract the amylase gene from the soil bacteria B. subtilis. Um, after extracting it, we added enzymes and opened the PET28 vector with the same enzymes. Um, a vector is a circular piece of DNA that is found in bacteria and we're going to use this to carry the um, gene because it's easier to transform into the plasma. Next we used ligation to add the new gene to the vector plasmid. This was then transformed into the bacterial, the E. coli bacterial cell by, through heat shock. Okay, and then for results, we ran a gel for the first thing to show that the gene was successfully taken out. The gene was about 2,000 base pairs long, so we used the lambda Hindi markers, which is a specific type of DNA where you know exactly where the um, base pairs are on the gel, so the matching area on there was 2,000 base pairs long, so we know it was successfully copied out because it was the same size. And then the next one we used to show that we cut out the part of the PET28A vector, so the part of the vector that we wanted to cut out and replace was cut out. We did this by looking at the original uncut vector, and which is circled on the right, and comparing it to the cut one. Because the line is higher up for the uncut, we know that it was shorter, the sequence, so it was successfully cut. Then after transformation, the new gene that's in there also gives it an antibiotic canamycin resistance. This, um, so they can only grow on this plate if they have the resistance and have been transformed. So we believed that these two colonies that are circled on the third picture are successfully transformed bacteria. Um, we isolated the DNA from these two cells to, or these two colonies to see if they were successfully transformed. And it turned out that they were not because the plasmids from these new colonies were the exact same size as the original vector, meaning it didn't get 2,000, it should be 2,000 base pairs longer because we added a gene that was 2,000 base pairs. Okay, and through this experience, I have learned how to persevere through things and the art of patience because not everything worked out the first time. We had to try things over. We had to redo everything a hundred times. But um, I also learned how to question what I was doing to figure out which part of the experiment went wrong, which part was um, the problem, and then how to fix it. Um, and then I also learned that research is something that I might want to do in the future, because I always considered just practicing medicine. I never thought about the research side of medicine until now. And then we'd like to thank everyone who helped us, including the grant that we use, the PRISM grant. Thank you.